What's up guys, Don here. This video is made for those who just recently picked up animation in Pivot. So if you already know all of this, I suggest you stop writing down your comment that you already know all of this because I don't really care. Now we begin. Where to download Pivot? You can download it from pivotanimator.net. Then after you got the installer, be sure to decline the other offer when you get to this part because it will install something in your computer other than Pivot. Now as to why this happens in the installer, you can read more in the description. Next is learning the terminology in Pivot. We have the animation canvas, here we have the tools, here we have the animation control panel, and lastly, the timeline. Next is we look at our stick figure. We call the red dots nodes or handles. The lines between those nodes are called segment. The orange dot is called origin, and if we click and drag the origin and the handles, they behave differently. I don't need to explain how this works because you can tell by looking at it. If you go ahead and click add figure, you can see how the other one has blue nodes and the other one has red nodes. The one with the red nodes is selected and the other one is unselected. Next is we click add frame. You will notice when you click add frame, we will get an image pop out in the timeline. This is the frame that you've added. Click it again and now we have two frames. Another thing you will notice when you move the stick figure, it leaves a faded image of the previous frame. This is what we call an onion skin. Next is we will talk about the timeline. This right here tells which frame you are on. If there is no blue box in the timeline, which means you are selecting or working on that frame, that means you are working on a new frame, which isn't in the timeline yet. You can copy and paste and delete frames and also insert frames to add your in-betweens. Next is shortcut keys. I've already covered this but I'll probably remake a tutorial for it. But for this video, for you who just started, it's easy to know the shortcuts. Here's how you can tell shortcut keys by hovering your mouse over the tools. You can play along with these tools by yourself and learn how they work. Or you can watch the rest of the video where I don't mention them at all and go jump into other important points. Next is we go click file and see other shortcut keys such as load figure type. We click that and we can see a lot of stick figures. We can load .stk files into our pivot. STK file is different from full body because full body is consists of different STK files by the use of join or connection tool. To load or use a full body, what you have to do is open another PIV file that has the full body. Then select the full body by either double clicking the origin or by click and drag copy it and paste it to the window you're working on. If it doesn't pop out, press the center button. Next is we go to animation control panel. I'm not gonna explain these because these are self-explanatory. I'll explain this. This is what we call frames per second. That's exactly what you think it is. How many frames will it show per second? Which means if you want a part to last in one second and you have 18 FPS, then you have that part showing in 18 frames or repeat that frame in 18. This is what we call timing how much time it will take for something to happen. And then we have spacing, which is the distance between the current frame and the previous frame. There's a video more in depth about this from Jujishi. I suggest you check it out and study more about it. When we're done with our animation, we want to save it. To save our animation, click file and save animation. The file extension is called PIV file and we can use it for sharing or saving full bodies just like I shown a while ago. Lastly, if we're done with our animation, we want to export it. To export our animation, click file and export. We have two options, AVI which is a video and GIF. Before we export it in GIF, you want to lower the FPS because there's some problem with the conversion. And for AVI, I'm not sure if there's a problem with the conversion. I use AVI for editing it in my video editing programs. These are my default option that I use, but it varies to what computer you're using. That's it for now and I hope you learned something from this beginner's tutorial. Thanks for watching.
Hi, what's up guys? Before I end the video, um, I want to tell you guys that you can actually add subtitles in this video in case you're speaking another language or bilingual or you can, you know, just do it freely. That would really help my channel. So yeah, if you do that, thanks a lot. And if not, then it's okay. You know, that's all. Thank you. Thank you.